Ever hear one of those things that sounds crazy at first, but upon thinking it over, it starts to make perfect sense? I have one for you. Afibbers have different poop. You heard me correctly. Your poop is probably different than a non-afibber's poop. But it gets even funkier than that. When researchers compared the poop of people with short episodes of AFib to those with more persistent AFib, they discovered even more differences. The worse and longer lasting your AFib episodes are, the more gut dysbiosis showed up in the poop. As it turns out, the microbes in your poop are actually linked to the severity of your AFib. It sounds crazy, but when you start thinking about the link between GERD and other gut problems and things like AFib, sleep apnea, and diabetes, it all makes its own sort of sense. So back to today's crappy topic. This was all tested in a study published in 2022 called the relationship between atrial fibrillation and intestinal flora with its metabolites linked below. Likely by some pretty brave researchers in some sort of hazmat suits. Anyone who takes on such dirty jobs in order to help cure our disease, I have immense respect for you. So if you're an afibber, pay close attention to this video as we dive in. Let's look at this study and find out what this study was all about, what were its findings, and most importantly, what is the significance for those of us with AFib and how we can use this knowledge to improve our health. Did you know that your stomach and intestines have over 100 trillion tiny cells called microbes living in them? That's more than three times the amount of cells that make up the entire rest of your body. These tiny cells can affect how our bodies work, including how we digest food, use energy, and fight off germs can even affect your mood. But when the community of microbes in our guts gets disrupted, it can cause some problems and has been linked to diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and obesity. Think of your stomach like the grocery store for your body. It gives you the food you need to survive. But your gut is like the pharmacy because it contains so many tiny cells that can affect how our bodies work. And we're only beginning to understand all the ways our gut and its microbes affect our health. Emerging clinical studies and basic experiments have confirmed that intestinal flora and its metabolites, basically the organisms and the environment they produce in your intestines, have a role in some metabolic disorders and chronic inflammatory diseases. Moreover, the gut microbiota has a role in cardiovascular diseases such as hypertension and heart failure. However, the relationship between atrial fibrillation and the gut has been unclear, hence this study. So this study aimed to look for differences in the gut microbes of people with AFib and compare them to normal healthy individuals to see what the differences were. More importantly, to see if there were consistent differences between the two groups. They did this by testing a stool sample and comparing 50 AFibbers with 50 health matched similar people who had no AFib and counting the various amounts of types of gut microbes. So what did they find? Well first let's understand that some microbes are called good because they can make our bodies healthier while well, others are called bad because they can cause problems. But what's really important is how many of each type of microbe we have in our gut so that there's a balance. For example, two people could have the same microbes in their gut, but one person might have a lot more of a certain type of microbe while the other person has a lot more of a different type. They call this difference between them the relative amounts, and doctors and scientists can look at these relative amounts to figure out what's going on in our gut and how it correlates to various diseases and disorders, such as AFib. Another important gut feature is a variety and diversity of microbes in our gut. Basically, the more the merrier. Microbes like to really mix it up. So, back to talking about our findings for afibbers, when we examine the diversity and relative amounts of microbes in their poop. Now, I'm not likely going to pronounce all this correctly, but if I do a half decent job and show me by hitting that like button. Now, in afibbers, it was noted increased amounts of ruminococcus, streptococcus, and enterococcus compared to the poop of non-afibber counterparts. And in afibbers, there was a decreased amount of Fecaliobacterium, Allistipes, and Acelibacter. Biophila were present also in lower amounts when comparing samples. But stranger still, when comparing people who had only short durations of afib to those who had more persistent afib, they found even more differences that seemed common to both of these subgroups. And while results showed short-term and long-term afib patients shared many common imbalances and gut features, Surprisingly, but not so surprisingly, unique alterations occurred more prominently in afibbers who had increased duration of afib episodes. In other words, the worse your afib, the worse your gut imbalances were likely to be. Given all this, it seems pretty likely that afib is related to imbalances in the gut. 
It's even possible that in the future, treating gut imbalances will be considered a necessary part of treating AFib. So what can we as AFibers learn and do having the knowledge in this study? Well, besides AFib, there are a ton of other problems that will show up if you have dysbiosis or imbalance in the microbes of your gut. GERD, SIBO, inflammatory bowel disease, chronic fatigue, urinary problems, acid reflux, heartburn, inflamed achy joints, acne, psoriasis, skin ration, ADHD, depression, anxiety, poor concentration. There are three main types of imbalances in your gut and you can have all three types. A relatively low count of the good bacteria that provides benefit if we have them in the right amount. Relatively too many of the harmful stuff that hurts us when they dominate our guts. Or your overall microbe diversity is low and you just have too little variety. If you suspect you have gut imbalances, you can be tested. Talk to your doctor as there are some non-invasive tests that can be done and avoid antibiotics unless truly necessary, as they can greatly affect our gut microbes. Now, you can try to beef up the population of certain microbes by taking probiotic supplements. However, they are not so likely to address large imbalances on their own. Remember, there are 100 trillion microbes in the gut. Taking a few extra probiotics daily will barely add up to the population you want. Given the gut's role in digestion and the fact that microbes within feed upon the food we pass through our stomach, it seems obvious that our diets play a huge role in determining the balance of microbes in our gut. So prebiotics and fermented foods are likely to both be helpful here. Basically, you try to feed the good and starve the bad. One approach I liked was developed by a friend, Dr. Norm Robillard, called the Fast Track Diet. Those who follow his empirical and flexible eating strategy frequently report dramatic differences in their gut health. And the Fast Track Diet offers an easy scoring system so you can easily determine how likely a food is to contribute to your digestive issues. I myself addressed a long time problem I had with indigestion until 10 years ago when I read his book, Fast Track Digestion Heartburn, and made a few simple changes. Now indigestion is rarely a problem for me. Another approach is a low FODMAP diet, which is often prescribed for irritable bowel syndrome and focuses on eliminating foods with specific fermentable carbohydrates and sugar alcohols. It can be challenging to navigate approach to your gut health there are so many things we are still learning and so many new treatments coming down the pipe, such as fecal transplant and fecal pills. They may be helpful in the future. Yes, literally transplanting poop or putting poop in pills where microbes from a healthy gut will colonize a disordered patient's gut to help them restore balance may one day be a treatment for aphid. And the big question this all leaves in my mind is that if we fix the gut, can we fix our aphid or at least get us some relief? So let's recap. AFibbers in general have some level of imbalance in their gut. The longer the periods of your AFib, the more abnormal the imbalance in your gut is likely to be, and it can be measured in your poo. If we suspect we have gut imbalances, which as an AFib, there's a good chance we do, there are tests available, so talk to your doctor. Treating gut imbalances can be difficult and very specific to the individual. The common approaches involve things like a low FODMAP diet, fast track diet, some specific antibiotics from your doctor, probiotic supplements, and prebiotic supplements. And finally, even if you do not fix your AFib by fixing your gut, there's a lot of reasons to do so anyway, not the least of which could you could be preventing your AFib from progressing and becoming worse or developing any of the other conditions associated with an imbalance in your gut. So let's start paying attention to our gut if it's talking to us with things like excess gas, indigestion, GERD, or other symptoms we may be downplaying or ignoring, and see if we can improve things. Now, if you found this video useful, I have a simple request. Drop a like on this video so YouTube knows this content is helpful and will share it with a wider audience. Or join my email alerts by signing up at BigNorthernBear.com and get invited to online meeting greets with me in my virtual studio. The first one's coming in March. I hope that in improving your gut health by working with your doctor or using tools like the Fast Track Diet, that you can also reduce your AFib burden. Thanks for spending time with me today. This is your friend, Big Northern Bear, out. We're broken, it's tragic. We're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic. Believe you could have it. And I know of sadness, the anxious in panic, the